this is my world on Trident, a completely open source, do-it-yourself 3D printers that I regularly use. In today's video, I'll make it print even faster by putting in two extra motors, switch to 9mm belt, put in a filament cutter, and doing some prints. Let's dive right in. This is the current state of the machine. As you can see, it already has some decent parts in, which include a CPAP cooling, an incredibly long Goliath hotten with an orbiter tool, external stepper drivers, but I will tear that all down in this 20 seconds disassembly montage. was wondering how much this bed weighs. Around 3 kgs, not bad. This bed took forever to heat up. I know what's inside, but my plan was to change that to a proper silicone heating pad. Let's have a look at the old heaters. It's four separate pads with a mysterious wattage. I don't know how to feel about that. Anyway, we'll do the cleanup and put in our proper pads. Install the motors mount, then put the motors in. So I just realized that I can't put this bracket in because the lead screw of my machine was too long. Okay, just got rid of them. That's now fits. Install a back motor with a belt. Now let's do the rest. The tool head that I'm going to use was another 4010 tool head because of the support for a filament cutter. Although it wouldn't have the same cooling capacity and flow rate compared to my old setup, I think that's a fair trade off. Speaking of the tool head, I did get my tool head MJF from Nylon from today's video sponsor, JLC 3DP. If you never heard of them, JLC 3DP. It's a one-stop shop for makers. They offer loads of material choices from regular FDM to SLM titanium. Starting from just 30 cents, they even had a $70 coupon for our new users. I used their service to order some MJF nylon. And not only did it ship in just two days, but everything came in a super well package wrapped in layers of bubble wrap so if you're planning to build your own printers and want a professionally made MJF nylon tool head like me, just grab the file and let JLC 3DP do the rest. Check out the link in the video description to see what they can do for your project. Again, big thanks to JLC 3DP for sponsoring this video. Alright, and we're back. Like the name said, this thing used dual 4010 fans for the hot end I'm gonna use the Rapido 2 UHF. And also like I mentioned before, this design already has a filament cutter design, which looks super cool in action. For the extruder, I'm going with Galileo 2 because of the less gear artifact that it produced compared to an Orbiter 2. Now install the Cartographer Pro 
to the carriage. After that, we could put our two head in. Cut the excess belt. First time, power on. No smokes? Great! Homing check. Omex. Yes. And home wide. Now we calibrate input shaper. You know what? Let's have a look at the graph. With the maximum recommended acceleration of 29,000 and 25,000 for X and Y respectively. These values are miles ahead compared to other machines without all of these upgrades. For the flow, I did test at 3 different temperatures on a 0.4mm nozzle with a PLA on it. At 200C, the max continuous flow was around 32 cubic millimeters. At 250, it was around 50. Then 72 at 290. And here's my printer starting routine. It begins by homing. Yes, I did change the homing position to the back. Then, it made a bed parallel to the gantry by probing three points. Then it will do a bed mesh. Then wipe the nozzle. The full prep time took around 5 minutes. For the first print, I went with a 5x5 Gridfinity base plate, which in fact did not fail. At this point, I didn't tune anything except for a resonance compensation. Keep that in mind. This is a screw organizer slash storage box that works with a Gridfinity system. Again, in PLA+, plus, at a speed and acceleration of 350 and 20k. The quality is questionable. You'll see a lot of lines and a gap in the corner. For the gap, I think I can fix that with a pressure advance. When you look at the pressure advance result, you have to find the one with no bulge and no gaps. In this case, it would be this one. After that, we print the same box again. And already the first layer looks a lot more clean. Quality check. Looks a lot better than before. But let's have a closer look. On the left is the new one, and on the right is an untuned pressure advance. As you can see, it looks a lot better, especially in the corners. But I don't know what caused this mysterious line in the back. Maybe it's the axis? If you know, please leave them in the comment below. It cannot be a DIY machine video without a Benchy, right? So here it is. I did two runs of Benchies. This one was a quality run, took around 7 minutes, and another one is BSO, basically benchy shaped object. But I think this one looks pretty good for a 7 minutes one. Coming up was a BSO that I mentioned before. I will not speed up or do any cuts in this print, hope you enjoy the print. This following part will not have any script, so I just gonna yap about the machine. So I bought this machine in like March of this year. Then I bought an all-wheel drive kit from Cibor. And this kit came with an aluminum CNC parts with 9mm belt. However, when looking back, I think this kit was a bit overpriced. At 299 you could get an Elpo Century Carbon, I think it's around that price. But I, but I didn't need any another or some more Core XY machine, so that's kind of debatable. And about 9mm belt, I know that to fully tension them to specs, I will need to do a tons of frame bracing or switch to 3030 or 4040 aluminum extrusions. 
and if you have a closer look at my electronic bay, you might saw that I ran a dual power supply. One was for a 24 volt system and another one was 48 volts for the motors. So why 48 volts? 48 volts could make your printer go faster, like basically double the max speed. I could run mine to around 1200 inch millimeters per second depending on our uh, motor temperatures I guess. Maybe I should monitor that. Yeah, why not? I have like 6 spare thermistor ports. But I saw some people could even reach like 4000 millimeters per second. That's like crazy speed. If you look carefully at around this part, I believe, there will be a layer shift. It is caused by a high square corner velocity. I set that to 50, I think. I don't remember the exact value. Yeah, but it seems to be too much. My gantry weighs like 1.1 1, 1 kilograms or 2 pounds, I think. Yeah, that seems to be too much. You will not see only one layer shift, it will be multiple of them. You will see it's like an S-curve, S-curve veggies, kind of cool, so I left it in. I did print a lot of veggies lately, but I didn't record any of them. What's funnier was all of them were around this 5 minute mark, but with a better quality. My fastest one was 4 minutes and 50 seconds. I would like to go lower but for that I would need an active cooling for my motors. And I think I would need to swap out this Rapido Hot and back to the Goliath because the flow is kind of capping me. But the reasons I decided to switch that in the first place was about the filament cutter. So if you didn't know, I had a unit of box turtle, which in the last video I couldn't use it because I didn't have a filament cutter. Tip tuning was a pain, trust me. You have to do it on every brand of filament and they all takes a lot of time. Every brand of filaments, their string different and if the tip, tip doesn't tune perfectly, you will have a string. A string will cause a jam and I have to clear the jam for like 6 times, it's, it's a pain. Back to the benches, it had a lot of screen and 3 layer shift. I didn't turn on the retraction cause they will slow down my print and I start to run out of things to say. So I'm gonna leave it here for today. If you have any ideas or projects or more upgrades that I could put in the machine, please leave them in the comment below. Again, thanks for watching and goodbye.